is ironic that Bob Dylan, the man of peace, should have brought such violence to Slane. Today, local shopkeepers and business people were counting the cost of that violence. As the damage was being repaired, a few remaining fans were still making their way home. The local Garda station and other buildings still bear the scars of Saturday night's disturbances. So how did Henry Mount Charles feel now that it was all over? I suppose there is a sense of relief. Um, there is also the sense that what was effectively a very successful concert has had this dark shadow cast over it uh, because of what happened in the village of Slane on Saturday night. And as far as I'm concerned at the moment, it does actually basically undermine the feasibility of running events like this in the future. So could this be the last concert in Slane? I, I don't know exactly what decision I'm going to make in relation to that, and obviously any decision I make would be done on the basis of close consultation with the residents of Slane. But many local residents have already decided there will be no future concerts in Slane. The beautiful village of Slane, it makes me sad. I'm not, I'm, I sh I'd like to be the one to say now, I told you so, but unfortunately I don't like to say that because it makes me sad. Slane is my village. My ancestors have been here for over 300 years and I, I feel very, very sad and very... I, I, I feel, I don't know, I can't express my feelings at the appearance of Slane Village on yes, yesterday morning when I saw it. Well, I was well, sickened. I was sickened. What should be done to prevent this kind of thing happening again? Well, the only thing to prevent it happening is have no more rock concerts in Slane. You would be opposed to any Completely further concerts? Completely opposed. Completely opposed to it. The rioting started around midnight. A crowd of about 40 gathered outside Slane Garda Station after some people were arrested following minor incidents. And though there were more than 8,000 visitors in the village, it's believed there were only about a dozen Gardaí on duty. The crowd outside the Garda station quickly got bigger, and at one stage there were as many as a thousand people besieging the station. Rocks and other missiles were thrown into the station, and nearly all the windows were broken. A Garda personnel carrier and two other cars were burnt out. Relatives of Garda who live above the station were said to be terrified. The station was besieged for an hour and a half. Garda reinforcements had to be brought in from other areas. As the Gardaí left the station to disperse the crowd, they were hurled with blocks and bottles. After a baton charge, the situation was eventually brought under control at 3 o'clock. There's loads of coppers with breadboards as shields, and they were being thrown, bottles were being thrown at them and everything, you know. Loads of bottles, you know, there's, about, there's thousands of people, you know, thrown bleeding bottles at them and all that. They were being whacked out. And what started the trouble? I don't know, there was, was some hassle in the station, look at the cop shop, the cop shop's in bits. But, uh, there was some hassle in the, the station and th that caused it all. That van pulled in there and they all started wreck kicking the van. All the coppers jumped over and bailed into the cop shop for protection and all. It's being wrecked over. What was the atmosphere like? Great. It was good up there. <laughs> <all>. <laughs> it wasn't for that. It wasn't a nice atmosphere. It was like, it was, it was like bricks and riots or something. Uh, it seemed actually that the rows were breaking out simultaneously up and down the street. So we all went into one big frenzy up the street and just chaos, you know? Pretty scary. And what was the scene like out on the street? Oh, it was horrific. Absolutely. Bottles flying and people screaming, running, trampled on everything. It was amazing. Absolutely. Eight Gardaí were injured and one is still in hospital. And five of the 11 civilians taken to hospital were detained. After the riot, the main street of Slane was covered with refuse. Windows everywhere were broken and a big clean-up operation got underway. Gardaí say it was like a battlefield. Even ambulances couldn't take the injured to hospital. One concert goer said it was like Northern Ireland. Just walking down, it was about here. I was standing talking to a few people and uh, the uh, few cars overturned. Just started sort of Northern Ireland type valves, you know. Overturned a couple of cars, set them on fire, then started stoning the police van. And eventually I think they set it on fire, but I sort of went back to the campsite. Local people were very annoyed at the violence and some said they didn't want any more concerts. One publican was so disgusted, he didn't even open his premises today. Totally disgusted. And uh, we, in 82, the Rolling Stones were here, but there was nothing. Uh, the Rolling Stones was, was uh, a, a teddy bear's picnic in comparison to what happened here last night. That people were actually afraid in their own homes. That they had to barricade their doors with, with, with uh, furniture, and uh, they feared for the safety of their children. 
that it's most disgusting that a small village like this should be subjected to hasslement of this nature. And would you be against further concerts taking place? I certainly place? would. I certainly would. If it, um, it's going to bring in an attraction of this type of element, uh, we don't want this type of element in, in our village. Lord Mount Charles, on whose land the concert is being held, says that the disturbances will make him think hard about future concerts. It certainly radically affect my thinking, that's for sure, because again it gets back to this, this uh, thing is that uh, when you have 50 people drunk out of their mind with uh, too much liquor and it just got out of hand, it was, it was appalling.